Hello there, everyone, and welcome back to the Central African Republic and TNO, the last days of Europe. I'm your host, Mr. William Westmoreland. But right now, we could either stand our ground or find another way. But we're going to attempt to do find another way for this part of the episode, or this, uh, you know, this video. And in the next video, we will try stand our ground, but find another way. From the failure from the All African Summit. It's clear that OFN cannot simply be a passive observer in the fate of Kanye, but must take a more active role. That should be mean disregarding the locals out of the hand, however. No, the problem with the summit was not the locals, but bad faith negotiation. Bringing together so many people, or so many groups, with so many conflicting interests. It's inevitable. Going forward, we need to be more selective about who we work with. Not all these warlords and rebels can get a piece of the pie, but some can hack. It may be necessary to make sure this problem doesn't get any worse. We need to begin by seeking out pro-OFN and o and groups in the continent. They're surely out there, and if not, some might be persuaded into becoming so. Either way, laying the seeds for a friendly government in Africa is absolutely vital. We don't want to be fighting here for the next few decades. Down the path of diplomacy, however difficult it may be. A paternalism, looking closer. Uh, looking closer at African politics. Our failure of the all African summit began and has been attributed to any number of errors of mistakes on our part. But the largest failing of our regime has been the failure to understand the intricacies of African politics. The State Department has assured us that our understanding of the great political mess, that is the African continent, will be neatly filled, or filed, and categorized within the next few years, long after it's too late for the United States to create long lasting peace in the region. We need to understand African politics as soon as we step onto the forsaken continent, and, but it's too late to go back. We need to start making up for the lost time today, as we sip on some peppermint tea. Uh, we have a yearly deficit, which kind of sucks, but. We did this one. Now look at the Chilean government. Worse than us right now. We have a little bit less growth, but we do have a better deficit that we can manage more easily. Um, we still have more uh, no poverty, but you know, whatever. This is Africa, whatever. Central African chaos. Oh, you bet it is chaotic. Uh, but we have some comments to go through as well from the last episode, such as, Does the conference always go bad? I don't know. It might. It probably actually probably does. Um, another comment is, Ah, uh, yes, the car. Someone says, do the find another way tree, which we are doing in this episode. Someone else says, do both paths, and we will. Someone says, go with Westmoreland, firefighter of the OFN mandate, Africa. Um, a little bit of lag. And someone says, can you do this in Kaiser Redux as combined syndicates of America with Harold Loeb as leader? Maybe eventually, yeah. Um, someone says, ah, the monstrosity of the car. This could only end badly, so someone else says. But a solution somewhere else. Mr. President, with all due respect that we just secured what that warehouse, yes, Mr. Madam understood right away, Mr. Sirs, Mrs. President. Juno Pierre is not as soon as he heard the click on the receiver through the door. Come in, the response sounded as though the speaker just received the news that his favorite hunting dog had to be put down. Juno Westmoreland's face matched his voice. You got this news too, sir, huh? Pierce said. Yeah, it seems like the hippies were making a loud enough racket for Washington to decide that a strong anti Nazi force in Africa was not worth the risk of their election chances. Uh, well, that's what I came to tell you about. Some of the local leaders approached us, the Party Democratique Orongo, the Congolese National Party, and the moderates in the Tanganyika African National Union. They plan as soldiers and would rather not get them killed fighting us when they could be taking revenge on the Nazis. We, on the other hand, have industrial and economic development knowledge to make them more effective at fighting said Nazi. Westman's head perked up as he lifted the phone from his receiver. Just tell who to call and we'll make the arrangements. Alright, so... Whether through diplomacy or war, the car will cease to exist by the end of the decade, if not earlier. Okay. So, it was doomed from the very start, basically. We reality other plans at, um, as local rebels and warlords prepare themselves for the tumultuous decades to come. The OFN mandate is at a crossroads. With little, what little land the OFN really controls is centered around our administrative capital, Quilomane, and our major port of entry, Dar es Salaam, the only two cities that really ever managed to completely control. These two coasts will be our last resort if Africa breaks loose. So, the Central African Republic is currently fantastic. All cooperative native movements in Central Africa are currently unwilling, unwilling, and unwilling. Crack down. Angola will be unfavored. East Africa will be greatly unfavored. Political stability will increase. Crackdown on Pan Africans, on separatists. Reassure the markets. Add 15 days to this one. So, the clock is ticking, but still possible to postpone the death of the car. Certain political decisions and certainly policy choices will push the deadline further. Buying the open just a little more time to enact their plans. We're already cheating this campaign to get here, so. Adding more time would be good, because if not completed, we will violently collapse, so. Talking with African socialists. Angola and East Africa, Angola and Central Africa. The board issues. Angola. We freaking love Angola. So we'll see where we're at with all that stuff then. Um, a diplomatic approach to occupation. Occupation may rhyme with oppression, but that doesn't mean the two have to be synonymous. The Africans are used to that association, of course, so Jim and Jack would give them apple reason to make sure that connection, and frankly, we haven't been much of a help in curing that notion lately. Well, we're going to be bringing stability to Africa, that's what's going to have to end, and fast. 
Negotiations seem to be the way forward. Talking rather than fighting a few advantages. Has a few advantages. Ideally. We want to get our enemies to lay down their arms and stopping the problems. That's not likely to happen in every or, or even most cases, but there's always going to be a silver lining. The more our enemies spend talking with us, the less time they'll spend trying to kill our soldiers, and the more time those soldiers will have to prepare themselves for the next battle. This other job. Something bothered me about this job, said Michael Grigg. This, this again? Asked fellow mercenary James Mays. Mike, you've been on this for days now. It's a simple job. We're just protecting these people in their little town. There's nothing sinister about it at all. The two were sitting at a small table in a little bar with a few others from the mercenary group, drinking more beer and playing with their well-used cards. They've been in town for a number of weeks now, and the job had been simple. Repel the occasional raid, collaborate with the native Anglo soldiery, and a ton of sitting around waiting for trouble. What are you complaining about anyways, Mike? He asked Vlasanov. Another other group. It's a job like any other. You do the work and get paid. And boy, do we ever get paid. The group chuckled about Michael Frown. That's the thing, guys, he said once, chuckling the head died down. The pay is really good, too good, in fact. Vlasanov glared at the man. Are you actually complaining about getting paid? What, are you some kind of commie now or something? No, he protested. Just look around. This town is a piece of crap. The plans fall apart. Everyone's poor as crap. How the crap can they afford us? That's the maze began before pausing. A good question, actually. How can they afford us? Listen, Michael said. I overheard some of the guards earlier talking about an un up upcoming raid. A bunch of mines on their side of the border where the Zanu Fs are supposed to be hiding out. What are they raiding the mines? An interesting hypothesis, grumbled Vlasanov, but it begs the question, why on earth would they? Michael said he didn't know why. But he was going to find out whether they like it or not. So, go up to that 43, pretty, so. Yeah, I apologize for already cheating earlier in this campaign, but you know what? At some point, you kind of have to, if you don't want everything to die. I want to make sure everything does well, still. So. Hmm. We need reserves, eh? Not bad, not bad, not bad. Crack on Warlords. Political stability will increase, which is already fine. And that's the last time we can do that. Which we should be okay, so. Looking closer at African politics. A Zambian plot. Oh, uh, quid pro quo. The American not understand what the Americans were saying. He could pick out a few words that resemble French, but nothing else. The beverages offered to both parties had long since gone cold, left unattended by the other two. Their bodyguards were tense, ready to turn their weapons against each other. A mass of locals had gathered nearby watched the proceedings. Suddenly, the two cursed themselves for not getting a translator. Time and time again, the Americans asked the mayor something. Time and time again, the Americans not understand. They responded in French. I don't speak English. The mayor, oddly enough, sympathized with the officer. But what good does it do when none can understand each other? The officer stood up, picked up his beverage, and smashed it. Gas went around the townspeople, a blatant rejection of the hospitality. An unsettling silence, and then yelling first by the American, and then he was drowned out by the populace. Seeing no reason saying, the American left quickly and quietly. If we only had more translators, then there would be a plot. Like a good egg barged through the door to the barracks, I had figured out what's going on, I knew this job was rotten. A number of mercenaries was thrust awake, groaning at the sudden change in consciousness. Michael, it's three in the morning, groaned my head, slowly sitting up with his bunk. What the crap are you on about now? I figured out what's going on in this crappy little town, Michael repeated. I was darn right, darn all of you. Joe Manson. Another of the mercenaries rubbed the deceit from his eyes. Darn it, Michael, slow down. What have you figured out exactly? And why did it require a meeting now, he groaned. Michael grimaced. I'm sorry for waking everybody began quieter now, but I need to know why the soldiers were raiding the mines, so I decided to follow them and overheard them talking. They collaborated with some ex-Rhodesian ultra and nationals who fled here after South Africa. The plot to kill Kenneth Kaunda, the head of the United National Independence Party. They're trying to reestablish minority rule here, and we're here to keep the natives under control for when they execute the plot. Michael was left panting for breath, but his writing produced less of a stir than he'd been expecting. And, Manson asked. And, what do you mean, Anne? Michael all but shouted. They're trying to use this to oppress the natives to kill innocents. Manson hopped out of his bunk, panting Michael on the shoulder. Come on, Mike. You've been in this business long enough to know that how this all works. We're mercenaries. We've done far worse for a little less oppression. Or, we've done far worse for than a little oppression. The barracks took out of the assertion, and Michael stormed out in the warm air night. Uh, a warm night air. Maybe the company had done worse, but he wasn't about to. He would make things right. Supposedly. African Politics 101. You know, Westmoreland wrote several books on Africa written by the old colonial powers, short of necromancy. It was the best way to solicit advice from those who had successfully kept some semblance of order on the continent in the past. Those old books gave accounts of small ethnic groups, with relatively unorganized politics. And those accounts were true in the 1860s. A hundred years has certainly not borne them out. Indeed, the diplomatic teams Pierce and had found a very different structure, with deep and far-reaching local politics. The Pan-Africanist movement, the most influential native political movement, was based in Cameroon and reached from Dakar to Pretoria. The more modern African socialist movement had two main branches, one by Lakonda and Zambia, and the other by Nerere and Tanganyika. In addition, there were numerous warlords and democratic movements to consider. Westmoreland called up peers, by sheer statistical probability, there had to be a few groups in Africa willing to make a deal with the OFM. Throw enough crap at a wall, that's a little sick, a diplomatic approach to occupation, though. Occupation may rhyme with oppression, like I read earlier, but I think I read this one earlier, too, so if you're in this again, please go ahead, my bad. Ooh. Uh, equip the pro-Americans. Priorities. Equip the pro-Americans. The public back home has seen, been growing increasingly sick of our boys drying out in Africa for a cause they can barely understand. At the same time, we've been getting nowhere on our own. It's inevitable that eventually we'll be pulling our, all of our troops out. Meanwhile, we've been securing new allies who are in dire need of more modern equipment. And there are some democracies planning to spare, it seems. Uh, pretty obvious to us how all these pieces should ultimately fit together. Now that we have friends of the continent, we can begin supplying them with the best weapons and gear the OFN has to offer. 
That ought to give them the edge they need to find there and our enemies and free up our own soldiers at the same time. There's no possible downside. Not at all. That's just getting worse. Ooh, that's went down a little bit. Better, but still. 58%, 73, 88, 98.8, 90, 90, 98. Promote support movements, ma'am. Rebuild these after. That'd be kind of nice. Mental Mori. But we'll see. Uh, necessary as it might be to a cause, there's a key problem with every last modern move in the region. They lack supplies. Even if the warlords loot their lands and revolutionaries uh, raid their people and so sensible Republicans who align themselves with a cause are left with no recourse but receive their funding by relying on a foreign power. Namely us. As mighty and wealthy as OFN in general America in particular might be, however, General Abrams points out that the funds of the car are very limited. Due to Congress being reluctant to be more involved, not wanting to invest too much in this project, and then losing it all should something go horribly wrong. With relatively little money for the users, therefore two choices when it comes to supporting moderate movements. We can either fund only those most supportive of the OFN and risk alienating regions whose moderate leaders want unsupported or support all of them and spread our public support too thinly to be effective. Mm. Support them all. I split in the splitters. In the wake of all the, in, in the all African Congress's failure, the few have benefited more than the freedom military force. For months, disaffected Africans have overheard the FMF's uh, message and have flocked to join them in droves. Their numbers are swallowed and the preparations become more frequent, more effective, and more threatening. However, the surge of numbers will split from among the FMF's ranks that have emerged. Swapping a moral junta, or junta. The method for us has long preached both democratic self determination and Christian moralism, and many other fighters have found themselves drawn to more than one and then the other. And the dead of a night, a splitter faction calling themselves a faithful mercenary or a faithful military force seized control of a significant portion of the group's land. This group has determined that the freedom force is too tolerant of pagans and Mohammedans. Mohammedans. And the change in the group's direction is needed. They for themselves God's hand in Africa, they have announced their intent to unify all of Africa under Christianity's guiding light. The remains of the Freedom Force have been thrown in disarray, and the majority of their operations have been diverted uh, from sabotaging our operations to combating the faithful force at every turn. While they continue to express the need for democracy and liberty for Africa at every turn, the recent crisis caused the Junta's leadership to crack down even harder and disloyalty and autonomy within the group. I love you moving forward towards autocracy to protect the people's will from those who try to enact tyranny. For us, it's an opportunity to try to gain the trust of some of the natives, especially those who have doubted us in the past, surely. If we're to aid one of the groups against the other, we'll show that we truly desire peace for Africa. More than that, we may be able to gain the loyalty of the force of media help. Allies and former Ost Africa is something we desperately need. The question remains, however, which side should we bet on? We'll do the faithful military force. Reward cooperative regimes. There are nascent regimes in Africa could, which could prove valuable allies are already busy doing so. Which show the people of Africa that working with the OFN won't go unrewarded. Those regimes that cooperate with their aims will receive the full economic support of the OFN market, as well as political support for the internal disputes. Not only will these measures help bolster the regimes that are already working closely with us, but will encourage others that may be on the fence to play ball, if only for their own sake. The zombie plot. Michael Grigg had an, needed to make things right on his own, thankfully. Fed up with his fellow mercenaries, Michael fled the small town heading for the capital of Lusaka, and the car that he had stolen from the mercenaries' four stores. What surprised the young Nalex mercenary was when his two friends, Mays and Vlasinov, had decided to come with him. The two had come from backgrounds of living under oppressive minority rule. Bays was a Belgian and Vlasinov was from Moscow. They had become mercenaries and escaped from the brutality of racial oppression and were not about to use this freedom to enforce the suffering they, had, they themselves have led. Thus, they had hesitated to go with Michael to the capital, where they would meet the man targeted in the plot himself. And why should I believe anything you have to say? asked Kenneth Kaunda. For all I know, you'd be there to try to sell me your services against an enemy that doesn't exist. Mr. Kaunda. We're not trying to sell, Michael pleaded, then stopped. He took a moment to collect himself before continuing. I understand why you might not trust us. We barely seem trustworthy, but what reason would we have to lie to you? We don't want any money for all this. We all we want is to keep the conspiracy from coming to fruition. Kaunda rubbed his chin, visibly mulling over. If nothing else, it's worth investigating, he muttered under his breath. If you're lying, it's a simple waste of time. But if you're telling the truth, the man trailed off, getting up from where he was seated behind his desk and walking to the window, as a trouble lamb. We desire independence, but we are stymied at every corner. What you told me is of great use to our nation. I thank you for your help. Michael looked at his companions. Actually, we'd like to help more if we could. Got some on our side. We've done great work. Well, the organization is already filling to the OFM, but there are more radical groups which might be sw ill swayed. Not all our allies are here overstated that way after all. Sorry here. And with the right promises guarantees, may we may be able to continue the process. We'll begin focusing. Or taking or talking things out with more actively hostile groups to see if they can be persuaded to join our team. If we play our cards just right, we might even be able to avoid a great bloodshed, a great deal of bloodshed and blood and fighting. A tribe of faith. Though they've committed 70 sins against uh, the people of Africa, the Americans today have repented and earned our forgiveness. And aiding our crusade against the prideful and self important Africans who think themselves superior to the Christ, the Americans have recognized that Christ's love stands above the concepts of nationhood and racialness. The Americans as fellow Christians are our brothers and sisters that should, and should be treated thus in all future matters. 
The faithful military force will be reorganized under Scipio as a warlord group, as the Pharisees that ruled before us wished. Instead, it will be an army of God, with the leader selected and chosen by the Lord himself, bestowed with uh, uh, <clears throat> uh, the godlike authority of the king and judges of Israel. The institution of democracy preached by the tyrants that came before is now known to be known as sub subordination of God's divinely inspired plan for the world to the choices of flawed human sinners. We'll turn our attention away from the church fellows and the Mohammedans and pagans who steal their gains and brutalize their children. We'll all fight forever for Christ's church in Africa and for all sinners who do not repent will perish. And we'll be sent to greet their master and the devil in the fire pits of hell, where they shall lament with their Judas's ways. As the Lord of God commanded us, whoever denies me before mankind, I will also deny before my Father in heaven. Do not assume I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. So too must we bring the sword. A worrying success. We need more in Central Africa. Where is Central Africa? And gold is loving it. Diplomacy and understanding. The fact of the matter is that we cannot just uh, devote enough manpower, nor do we have the support to occupy all of Africa by ourselves. Thus, we need to turn to the native militias within Africa to help maintain some semblance of order within the vast territory. Because of the nature of these militias, command is more decentralized than before, um, uh, than we would like, to be, like it to be as well. This, of course, is an issue that must be dealt with as soon as possible. Well, some suggest we should adapt this way of command. Uh, while it's a simple theory, it would be a nightmare to do so. Um, it is extremely costly and be time consuming. Further, such implementation of policies allow to get botched, and even if all goes well, may never work as a vision. Alternatively, we could decentralize the command further, loosening the reins of government on the militia, so to speak. It'd be far easier to do, for us to do so, albeit at the cost of making them effectively independent of our control. Whatever happens afterward could be a disaster. Even with these risks, these, this course of action would please the natives and give them reassurances from our troops. When in Rome, political stability will increase. East Africa will be greatly favored. This ambient plot. Michael Gregg talks stocks away through the southern Moibo Moimbo woods. Cohen that accepted Michael's offer of help and assigned the man to search southern Zambia with a group of native Zambian militiamen for signs of the ultranational self. It had been grueling work thus far, requiring hours of staggering through brush, searching for the faintest hints that something large had clung their way through. It was only on the fifth day of searching that they found something. Look down there, one of the militiamen had said, handing Michael a pair of binoculars. There's a camp in the clearing, maybe count maybe ten tents. Michaels peered throughout the offered instrument, confirming the count. A plan was quickly drawn up and their attack come nightfall. The fighting was brief, outnumbered, and taken by surprise as they were. The ultra-nationals were quickly overcome by the larger force of militiamen. Although they must have realized the situation was most hopeless, the ultra-nationals fought to the last man, taking a quarter and offering none in turn. The government work was accomplished by mid-morning. Cohen hadn't been happy when he heard the news of the slaughter. Some days later, but Michael could see a sense of relief rush through the man in a slump of his shoulders. You've done zombie a great service, Mr. Grigg, he said. One they will not be quick to forget. All of us make things right, Michael responded, fix something that I broke. Indeed, Cowan just said, a small smile settling on his face. A noble sentiment, though one rarely said. Sadly, in today's day and age, a sentiment that one I feel zombie can use more of. What do you mean, Michael asked. I mean what I said, responded Cohen, just a smile growing. That's a place for someone who thinks like in the zombie army. That is, of course, if you want to fix more things. Michael's smile grew to match Cohen does. It would be my pleasure. So we read all these American Foreign Legions. Ooh. Mastering nation building. Negotiate with the locals. Originally, we had planned to use much of the natural wealth of Africa to bolster the LFM. The reasonable payment for all the money and lives were poured into freeing the continent for us. However, we might be able to earn more of the goodwill, which uh, allow for some more nationalization of these precious resources. It will be good for wealth and profit margins in the short term, but an argument can be made that swaying more elected Africans to our side and a stabilizing continent would be far more valuable in the long run. Tea with Naira. Cooperation with the Americans, yes, they have many resources, but. Silence fell upon the room. As Kawawa and Kambona's efforts to convince Nayara were rebuffed, Kawawa broke the silence first. It is true that the Americans are imperialists, there is no question, but it is best to cooperate with the Americans to develop the nation. And risk them taking our infrastructure under their control? What about them opposing conditions on our resources? Nayara slipped his, sipped his tea, putting it down. I'll concede this West Merlin is better than the Germans ever will be, but he hides a, behind a veneer of, veneer of liberation. Nayara's counterpart looked at each other, uh, trying to think of any reason to convince Nayara that the Americans could be worked with. We believe the risk is still worth it. Reconstruction is a priority we should can, we cannot ignore. And we still cannot do it by ourselves. It is better to use imperialists to our advantage uh, first than the other way around. Julius closed his eyes. Clearly in deep concentration, Kawawa and Kambona could only wonder what he was thinking. Perhaps he'd come to their side. It was more likely that he was trying to get rejected or try to reject their proposal politely instead. Or proposal politely. Instead, they were met with a decisive Nyerera. I will discuss this with the rest of the Tanu leadership, working with the socialists. So for the wave of anti-imperial sentiment, the various socialist ideologies have unsurprisingly made inroads into the African continent. According to our sources, from the 1950s onwards, two dominating strains of socialism have developed in Africa. 
the most well known are the Pan Africans, or centered in Cameroon. They are violently, violently anti colonialists, and any nation or anyone attempting to export Africa for their own benefit. They once were the enemy of the Germans and are the enemy of the Americans. While fighting is broken up between the Pan Africans and the U.S. in the past, there's hope for some form of reconciliation. If promised not to disturb their activities, they might be receptive to having formal relations with us, at the very least. It would free up our troops on the border. On the other hand, we could always work with the more moderate socialists. Represented by Julius Nyerere of Tanganyika and Kaunda in Zambia, they are far less powerful and present across Africa, but they are far more open to cooperation with the West. If we work with them, we'll need significant amounts of resources to counter the Pan-Africans. We can save resources by working with the Pan-Africans for moderates. Um, I like this one. This obviously is better, but we're already working with Nyerere, so um, we probably want to go probably with the moderates for now. The problem of profit. One of General Westmoreland's more important duties as caretaker of the post-Nazi Africa is overseeing the development of infrastructure to exploit the rich resources of the continent, and in doing so, leave behind the strong post-colonial nations committed to the OFN and its cause. The initial plan was for the OFN to hold the rights to exploit the resources it was paying to develop, Dallas with the intention of selling the rights off to American and Canadian, and Australian and corporations. Recently, however, Native Nationals Movement has organized a series of picketings of key mines demanding the full nationalization of all infrastructure and resource exploitation projects. Tensions had risen to a boiling point and necessitated the general involvement, on the one hand, acquiescing to the Nationals would certainly calm things down on the ground, sending the message that the OFN was not another colonial power. They were generally here to help. On the other, though, the OFN had more technical know-how and infrastructure operated by them would be more efficient. General Westmoreland set down this type of type in order to nationalize them. Stay the course. Central Africa is at 88.5%, which is the lowest, so we've got to do with whatever Central Africa wants. Doesn't mean it's going to be very good, but whatever. We're so equipped with pro Americans, but uh, master of nation building. Africa is like a freaking jigsaw puzzle in a lot of ways. Scattered groups, each fighting and locking together in difficult to discern ways. One wrong placement could start a whole new fire that we'll have to put out. On the other hand, putting things together just right means about a long lasting peace. We've got a lot of experience with nation building by acting as mediators and hammering out border disputes between the locals. We'll be able to that much more direly need a goodwill among the independent minded locals. We're doing okay. We're doing alright. 260 days left. Um, 0.47, not good for that, but whatever. Priorities. General Westmoreland hung up the phone and sighed. How many of the European empires managed to get reached enough palms and bash enough heads to hold on to Africa for the better part of a century was beyond him. Um, I was never making wish he was a necromancer among the general staff so they could ask him directly. Wishful thinking aside, of course, Westmoreland could only talk about the living, and only a li limited number of the living at that. The general had, had so many diplomats at his disposal, so had only so many, and decided where to send the best of them. The West now, the Central African Republic, formerly under the relative light touch of the Reichs Commissary Muller and Schenk, was full of natives who were willing to work with just about any foreign nation that didn't seem like it was going to be set on burning their villages down and saving their loved ones. The natives of Viva Africa, on the other were much less willing to talk with anyone who shared their skin, pigmentation with their former tormentors, unfortunately. East Africa is also the biggest trouble spot on the continent, so we might need the extra attention. Ultimately, West Berlin chose Baratas, safe option in the West. But it, was stupid. it doesn't matter at this point, we cheated hard enough, that doesn't matter. Yeah. And goal is good. We're using Af East Africa now on our side. American Foreign Legions. Way back when, before France was conquered and humiliated, they had these ingenious little fine forests called Fra French Foreign Legions. These forests would allow foreigners to join the ranks and fight under French command. There may be just something for us to learn here. France did control large parts of Africa in its time after all. Adapting the local general concept into American Foreign Legions may do the trick. This force would be, un would be under American command and training, but made of American African soldiers, actually. Of African soldiers. It certainly help relieve our own troops from the hard work of fighting in Africa. It might even give the Africans a sense of what they're participating in the whole process. We'll encourage them to play by our rules to do so. Either way, it'll keep Washington from having to explain why more bodies keep coming back home. Out of bit of nation. Africa's home to multitudes of people within its sprawling territory. To the average tourists and anthropologists, it would be a wonder to behold. For administrators, especially ones with little experience, it is their greatest nightmare. To say that the open is an experience in nation building is surely an understatement. We have no experience in building new nations from the group, nor do we know of the political climate in Africa. As such, we've invited local leaders from across Africa to discuss what to do about this matter. Most have directed us to consult Patrice Lumbumba or Julius Nayara in this matter. Lumbumba argues that Africa is similar to Europe in its early days and in of ethnic diversity. As such, calls for something akin to centralized uh, nation states as seen in Europe. That was abused up to build nationalism and eventually full fledged states. On the other hand, Nayara argues for the exact opposite and this corresponds with us. He advised we create federal states to handle such diversity cultures. Such a thing, he says, would go a long way to prevent tensions and trouble later on. The Mumba's right. Ah, uh, sure, we'll take the stability one out. We need some more money, though. Give it to our allies. It seems the work has paid off. We're finally ready for changing the guard. Our allies are in place, things are stabilizing, and there doesn't seem to be much else that Darley needs us to attend to. We should finally hand off control to our allies and allow them to put the work in of keeping the peace and governing things. We'll still maintain political and economic support, of course, but for now, open troops can finally go home. Well, we'll see how long they can actually go home. You know, you never know. Grilamine Leopold Villanueva, someone cut you down. 
uh, the debt will be an issue, and even though we're doing the best we can, I can't imagine a bunch of Africans, like, successfully doing this completely, maybe, so, you know, especially in the 60s. Friends freedom. Through the propaganda we put out the game, spoiler, this acquiescence, uh, or if everyday people might claim that this or that movement is a friend of freedom. I rely on a partner in American popular democracy, both on the continent and in the world. The reality is that for most of these movements are strongly anti-imperialist, and by extension, potentially anti-American, if they aren't already. Such movements uh, also tend to be the most popular, and such that have the greatest chance of building strong, stable countries that can exist without continuous foreign support. This leaves the OFM between a rock and a hard place. We can either support only those groups that support the, the goals of the OFM, or its great instability and violence by anti-American forces after we leave, or support the popular movements that can create stable with states after the withdrawal of our forces. But who will need some convincing to become supportive of the American aims? The choice we could make. We make could shape the fate of the region for decades to come. Staunch allies deserve our full support. We must support the will of people or face their wrath. I like the fate, this one. I mean, we need this one too, anyways. So we'll be fine. I'm not sure how you're supposed to have like money for all this stuff. Like, we, there's no way you can get, make more money. We can't delete our divisions. We have no navy. We have no air force, anyways. So, what the heck did I click on? Scorched Earth. And then the Man of Africa is going to read about that next. We did some military austerity. We got napalm attacks. The AI loves napalm attacks. RFK is just Mr. Napalm. Overextended Army, of course. Legacy of German Africa. General building constructions and whatnot. American Foreign Legions. General Westmoreland had a problem. Well, I was saying General Westmoreland had a problem. I was like saying a bit of a raindrop hit Norway's Ark. This particular raindrop was on that divided Westmoreland's General Sabbath morning. At the start of the meeting, the general proposed the formation of an American Foreign Legion. We had organized the various anti Nazi armed groups from the various navies wanting adventure and vengeance, to mercenaries looking for more of a city paycheck, to U.S. soldiers bored with guard duty under single command. The proposal found near unanimous approval, however, the general staff was split on the issue of how much autonomy to give the Legion its course. One have argued that the men of Africa would be the most effective if a high degree of leeway when it came to organizing their own operations, but the other ha counter half or half countered that the band of armed men giving near total free realm of Africa sounded like an awful luck reducing several new warlords under the continent to stir up the very same troubles the Legion was meant to contain. After considering the options formed, General Westman chose to loose leash, tight leash. Honest, I would be much prefer tight leash. Give him a loose leash. See what happens. Nothing bad will happen when that happens, right? Absolutely not. As inflation is coming down, which is nice. Um, at this point, you might even consider instead of doing fresh off the presses, which gives us more growth, one percent more growth. Um, trying to counteract inflation, counter pennies, up to three percent total reduction. Fighting poverty. Hmm. We'll go with this one for now. We spend the crap out of our money too. Give it to our odds on our terms. Despite all the difficulties they face, despite all the opposition, the arguments and protests they've done it. Africa is going to be a free land of liberty, a star conscious of what it was under all the two recent Rockets Commissariats, and it was all thanks to the efforts of the Westmoreland and the men under him. Such a result achieved simply through talking and compromise. Perhaps not everything had gone as Westmoreland had wished, but he decided a peaceful transition to free democracy was more than any many expected. If nothing else, achieving that was something to be proud of. I was not time to prepare to leave, and while Westmoreland couldn't say he would miss all the struggles that came with it, his time spent here in Africa would always hold a special, irreplaceable place in his heart. As he packed his bags, he began to realize that for all his time spent as a soldier, Meant to fight wars and share of blood, his greatest accomplishment would always be the restoration of peace and of prosperity in the African continent. Even no one else in the U.S. ever recognized it for what it was. It was important to Africa, and that was good enough for him. A true hero, in the end, needs no weapon. Westmoreland has avoided disaster. Uh, oh, I'm sure there's another event, right? Ah, the peaceful descent of the Central African Republic. For the first time since the crucible of the Second World War, the United States of America entered into war. It's not a war for greed or more for power or for hatred, for we've seen all too much of the types of war in recent years. No, it's quite a different kind of war altogether. It was a war to protect the innocent and one to liberate the uh, oppressed. I tell you that no more, war, no more just war was ever fought on this planet than the one we fought in Africa. That was the reason that once the death of finally settled, we by God's grace emerged victorious. We had more than just the normal responsibility to clean up the debris of our fight. We demanded, if you will, to undo the evils of Nazism in the continent, to prepare the people there to govern themselves, just as our founders prepared us Americans to take control of our own destinies. 
It's my pleasure to announce the world. The mission has come to a successful conclusion. Thanks to the efforts of the OFN and local leaders across the continent, the All African Summit has been a diplomatic success on parallel to mankind's history. Never before have so many countries been granted their independence at one time, with such massive reverberations across the globe. We've rolled back the mistake of the Berlin Conference and further the aim of freedom around the world. I know many of you know me first and foremost as a warrior, but I'm more proud of myself than I've ever been before when I consider that my name will be attached in history to such a monumental project of peace. And with that final flourish, Westmoreland speeches was finished. To say that the applause of the crowd covering the National Mall's grassy expanse was definitely going to be an understatement. Heck, Westmoreland thought himself they could probably hear it in Germania. Taking a deep breath, a general moved to take a seat, passing a sermon of fellow officers and politicians, the president included, as he did so. He noticed that they did not seem altogether happy. Disappointment was to be expected, he supposed. They'd hope for more return from their African investment, no doubt, still profit or not. The African continent would hopefully know some semblance of peace and freedom. And wasn't that enough for them in Washington? Westmoreland hoped so. Oh, this goes back to the other tree? Oh boy. Ah, a great victory. Once again, Westmoreland is victorious on the African continent. Though the first victory was merely against the Nazis, now he's all crushed extremists and insurgents of all stripes. This incredible triumph, in spite of the odds, has been caused much celebration in the OFN, although not all are happy with the result, notably General Pierce, who was disgusted by the bloodshed, and Cyrus Vance, who saw the entire operation as a pointless endeavor, however. No matter what their view on the war, and all the OFN can now relax and rest easy. Well, that's what you think. Unchallenged? Not bad. Increased mining exploitation? You betcha. It's going up anyway, so do that, and let's do that. I want money. God dang it. Uh, then again, I do want more uh, income boost by 10 million. 10 million huh? That's fine. God dang it, we need money. Great victory. The anomaly on the continent. It's clear now there's a perishing or persisting anomaly on the African continent. One which must be finally be addressed the American presence. In the aftermath of a liberation war where no one was liberated and emancipation what brought new chains, it's clear that to will all with good sense that the car is only a tool for imperialism, not human liberty. Although much has happened since the formation of the Republic, perhaps it's time, finally time for their OFN to understand that and do something to solve it as much as it can be fixed. Celebrations. Gold jets of sparkling blue, with spring water and trays upon trays of exotic native de delicacies uh, unfurled. Uh, Ushered forth American second triumph against the native barbar barbarism and warlord influences on the native Africans. Oh, how they attempted to achieve victory was laughable. So remarked the wandering, just metal troops, commanders, troop commanders of the party, chugging down champagne while laughing through their teeth at this victory of freedom and civilization. Sucking. On the caviar and tropical puddings, business leaders, military heroes, and figures from the military industrial complex chatted and prattled in the ivory palace to celebrate America's victory over, over once again. It had been a tough one victory, but you know what they say about Africans. Fifteen of the soldiers for one of ours is the best deal they can offer. Trudging into the party. I'll still have fed in his money in green jungle green jacket. Westmoreland took a position leaning against the sidewall, sucking on a cigarette. Surrounded by the shimmering and sparkles of the high elite festivities, Westman could only lower his head and attempt to not remember what he'd just been through. Looking over his shoulder, he saw a small stand up glass table on which sat a radio receiver. Switching on the device in order to lighten the mood of the occasion, the static key voice on the other end broke through the party's light music and conversations. Protests and riots breaking out across American cities and military outposts. Local protesters have are calling it a blatant and forceful act to crush the freedom of the native peoples and cultures. At home and abroad, fire spreading across home, jumping from several wounded, injured to the lungs sustained from gas attacks, rubber bullets. Westman was quick to switch it off, but the party did not immediately return to its fares. Looking around, shocked and dazed, the party goers could hear a small thumping in the silence. Across the horizon, throughout the cold night, th there it was. A few shots, an echo of an explosion, and sparkles all around to light up the night. And they were getting closer. Prepare for a departure. The place of often sought to make for itself in African affairs now is impossible to fulfill, despite the best efforts of the United States. The occupation forces did the best they could given the situation they were in, but it seemed that their best wasn't enough. All that remains is the enormous logistical challenge of bringing all the soldiers home, a challenge that will be successfully met if American leaders have anything to say about it. The men are coming home victorious once again, only time will tell if it's worth their sacrifice. But what for glory? But for what glory? The battles have been won in spite of all expectations, but the time for celebrating that, that, that fact is long past. Westmoreland has come to accept that he did not win the war in the ways wars were meant to be won, only making the painfully felt failure more tolerable than those back home. There was no glory to be found in the African crisis for American men, no great Nazi threat remaining to be crushed. It was only a war against people who wanted to be finally free from imperial schemes and nothing more. The pendulum. Out of the warm amber darkness sprang the mark of a firebrand. It was up, uh, slipped along not to a speech, but to a strong yet somber yet fiery tune of eternal revolution against colonialism wherever it may appear. The sleeve covering his bicep ran with a flag and an insignia of the African S. M.S.E.B.A. Signaled to his audience that this man was a man of Pan-African unity and zeal. His fingers gripped the very air as he spat venom about the rule of his colonial American slave masters, the rapists of Africa, the exploiters of us all. I know many of you are saddened by what has happened. I know many of you are angry, frustrated at the continued vic 
continued victory. The continued oppression and the American hound dog imperial press onto us. Feel it in your shoulders, in your mind, the pressure that's there. Realize how we all feel it now. Lifting up the sleeves of his jacket, the firebrand pointed out marks on his arms, scraps, wounds, bruises. We all feel whether by blood or skin or even by thought. Our wounds suffered at the hands of imperialists, sliced deep into the innocent soul. Lifting himself up into the still air of the night, the firebrand expanded his message. Right now, I can tell you what we'll attempt to do. Those imperialist American pigs will pluck out bootlickers and cowards from the populace. We'll make one a leader, make an administration out of the rest, give them firearms and explosives and American educations. At least the Germans would tell us they hated us, and now we have Americans claiming to have freed us, all while killing our children and robbing us of our wealth, and doing what the Germans would have done only worse and more destructive. But there's still hope. Come, my brothers and sisters. Let's overthrow the colonial imperialist puppet kings. Let us show them the people's fury, even if Kol Kolingba cannot. Down with them, down with them all. In the ways of the night, the firebrand speech rekindled them almost dead fires of resistance into the, something more than any individual could muster. Cheering, clapping, the pulse of the revolution, the firebrand was asked his name. I am a colonel, colonel Bokasa. Farewell, Africa. But packing up the bags first. Alan Thomas and Alan Matthews set, us all, set aside their pistols, rifles, and shell cases for a moment as the troops' convoys near the targets of coastal cities and airports across Central Africa. Leaning back against the hot, graying metal of the troop transport truck, Alan Thomas, Thompson slipped off. Uh, he was dusty as heck, combat helmet to look back at the man on the other side. Puffing a cigarette, Alan Thomas asked Alan Matthews across. Remember, you ever wonder that a uh, South African dude got all satisfied and think he's famous now? Uh, Alan Matthews shot back, confused in the center press, expression on his face. What the heck are you talking about, Thomas? What South African? You must mean those men we saw back in Winnook. Alan Thomas, now sharing Matthews' expression, yelled back, Not, not the gosh darn fellows we saw in Winnook. Why, like what I mean, the fellow in Win Look, it doesn't matter. I mean, just the one in the news, the one that got us here. Take care out of your butt and use your darn brain for a second if you still got any. It was all bloody, you know, and said, Where the crap are the Yankees? You getting to me now? I'm just wondering what he's doing now, whether he's famous or something. Probably just out of, out of here before us. Alan Thomas, arms spread now, with a look of contemplation on his face, continued on with the conversation. Remember back then, everyone was calling it the African Adventure. Bullcrap, of course, I believed it. But bet you did too. A silence overtook the pairs. They both suckled down a pair of cigarettes. We ain't never got those years back, are we? Despite all the hard-fought battles, all the lives lost, sacrifices made, the car is a failure. This reality can no longer be avoided. The African crisis brought the open forces to their knees. The odds of the entire continent upon them. Although they eventually grasped the victory from the jaws of defeat, the near disaster was too much for even a single further de day of occupation to be justified. It's time for the elephant to leave. The peace that has been created will be put to the test of time, and hopefully the continent will begin to heal. Reporting back to Ireland. Report of the Pentagon, this is Cyrus Vance speaking. Uh, yeah, yeah, hello, I'm General Counsel for the Department of Defense, yes. My apologies, Techn technology back here is lacking in capabilities. Listen, I know you're looking for some proper and comprehensive explanation for what's happening here. I don't think you're going to find any, though. Information about here is a mess. I wouldn't be surprised if Westman himself only has a glimpse into the mess that is a car's bureaucracy or administrative dealings. I try my best to tangle the webs of red tape and corruption, but I'm sorry to say, though, there are foundational problems here. We can't handle this, simply put. The car is running on a lot of support. I'm, if I'm going to be honest, I highly suggest a tactical withdrawal while we still can, along with maybe a few investigations I... What? Well, if that's the case, I'll move on to the policy decisions of Westmoreland himself. Needless to say, there are many problems. I'm being serious here from what I've seen. Westmoreland's incompetence is threatening the very stability of the African continent. His decisions are brash and unruly, prone to angering the very people we are supposed to be working for. I've made my opposition known, and this whole African crisis is directly or indirectly in his hands. You can't mean, look, there are many more important issues right now. I, I would suggest you go to a public relations advisor for this sort of thing, but if you truly want my advice, it would be to sell the loss of Af American lives as a act of generosity and mercy. Say, we're, we're helping the African people over here. They have become angry at us for no reason and have even killed Americans in the process. But we're still helping them. We'll never give up our support for freedom worldwide even if it kills us. Look, you'll probably find better solutions than mine, but take my word. We can't. We won't be staying long. I've got to go now, okay? Um, Spend money, huh? Look at this. Do we have the reserves finally? Oh, we do. A little bit. Quarter billion, huh? Not much. We had stuff here, but it doesn't even matter, really. Um, Increase. 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 Farewell, Africa. The helm of the engines of the planes were cleared a day as General appears ears. And stared out of the window next to him as the plane began to move. All that trouble, and in the end, they were leaving anyways. I knew it, Piers. I knew it from the start that her standing on the ground was the best option. Next to him, Westman spoke, apparently pleased with himself as Piers looked. Oh, look at that. Uh, towards him. And look at us now. It might be a limited victory, but it's a victory nonetheless. We're coming home in triumph. Piers did his best to not let his doubt show, but though he wondered if he succeeded at that. Is that so, he asked. A job well done, then. In response, Westman grinned and nodded, though something about it seemed oddly fake to Piers. Perhaps Westman himself no longer fully believed in the course of actions he had taken. Too late for that now, though. What was done could simply not be undone. Turning back to the window, Pierre's gaze upon the airport one last time as the plane finally took off. He wondered how many irreplaceable people have been killed, how many irreparable things have been damaged for the sake of Westmoreland's vision, which even after all that had happened and all the sacrifices that had been made was still as fragile as glass in the end. Would any of it have been worth it? Had this really been in the best interest of the old end? For his own sake, Pierre knew he could not let these doubts and countless others plague him, but he also knew he would never escape them. In any case, it was time to say farewell to Africa and leave the future of the continent to those who are, on, who are there to stay. Africa is on its own now. Reflect then aside, huh? Oh boy. It seemed like. Oh, and they exploded.
And yeah, it's still lagging. Okay, so it just exploded no matter what. That sucks. I mean, what do you expect? Fumes of the battlefield, nice. Zambia, Nyasa land, Mozambique, Nyayara, Republic of Tanganyika, Tiny Little Luo land, Uganda. Oh, it's uh, Kigli the Fifth, huh? Congolese Republic, Bay Africa, up here, um, Dako, Leon Umba, the Mumba. Uh, but we have to election year, apparently, we got a vote. Not sure who we're voting for. We're going to campaign in the south. I'm not sure we're voting for it. Did we get the event? Did you get the event, right? I reflect the end aside. There's no better time to reflect the end of the moments of lassitude. When the mind is slightly ajar, slightly more welcoming than it tiptoes between consciousness and sleep. Oh, the elephant cards the car. West, William Westmoreland. He found us 20,000 miles above the south of the land. The general turned governor turned general learned unpacking his thoughts was easier than the more quillamay shrunk from the cabinet window. And by the time the coastline gave way to clouds and endless blue ocean, the otherwise stubborn man's head was to wash with what ifs, could haves, and should haves. It only been more men, more resources, more time could have salvaged something out of the war, should have done this instead of that. The cotton had left its mark on the man who lost it, tormenting him with a vision of potential cut before, uh, short before its time. John Lavelle had his own epiphany the night prior underneath the star studded canopy of the Luanda's outskirts. He did the best he could as Angola's mediator may not even hold for as long as it took him to secure. Bitter as may be to accept, but the fate of the country would now rest on men like Neto and Savimbi. Not foreigners who wondered how Connor with little hope could have midnight so bright. And creating Abrams, well, he never quite had such moments until he found himself in the study. Letter, paper, and ink stand at the ready. Retirement hit him like a mail outlet upon its upside the head. Fast and set of him forever a pain once it's there. Fitting for a man who sent abandoned more allies and seen more war than anyone by all rights should. So, should he? For that matter, should they? And so then, the all-African adventure for Abrams, Westman, and Lavelle. With Africa free, free, they could finally retire from the military affairs and silence. Such ends the story of the South African Republic. Or America needs yet, them yet. Just, with just one part of the free world, or world free, the stands of Nazism, J uh, Japanese imperialism, Abrams, Creighton, and Westman will continue fighting for democracy worldwide. Do that, they need to help the U.S. government. Uh, let them retire. But, oh. And that ends that, but... Central African Republic was hailed as the greatest testament to the Af American dreams for the African continent in the wake of the South African War. It seems to be not what it used to be, or what it should be. A published communique from General William Westmoreland to the President of the U.S. has revealed that an attempt at a summit has fallen through. Having little practical choice, the General made the decision to grant the many autonomous regions independence to prevent possible violence. The President expressed disappointment that the greatest experiment of the car was unable to succeed, but nevertheless expressed her congratulations to the new nations on the independence. Things do not go exactly as we hope, but the U.S. welcomes its brother nations across the ocean into the world. Hope that we will be able to maintain mutually beneficial friendships in the year to come. An expected outcome. In all honesty, yeah, I expected that too, but... Uh, well, so in the next episode, we will continue to do, um... We will do the same thing. And we'll try the other side. I think we'll probably end up in the same way, but, you know, you never know. See what the war path is like, but... If you enjoyed the video, though, and the end of the car, please consider a like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow. I will see what else we can do with a car. Thanks for watching. Have a great, great rest of your day.